Come on, you can go ahead and have your seats before our amazing partners that's here today. Come on, we have we have Shamina Kingsley. Come on, you guys know Shamina. Come on. Shamina is our, our, our awesome outreach director, but she's going to be representing Copper and Shelters today. Come on, we also have, come on, the merchants are here today. Amber and Sterling, Be The Good Project is here, one of our partners. Come on, and I'm super excited to, to a new face, but not a new face to us. Come on, Jordan Gear, our global missions, part of our celebration family. Come on, family. Can we just one more time, can we put our hands together for all of our partners? Here's what Partnership Sunday is all about, family. What I love about what God is doing in the midst of our Celebration Church family, and and definitely even here at our D.C. location, one of the things that that God spoke to me and Pastor Brenda early in this year, back in January, he said, hey, hey, Anthony, I, I, I want you to make sure, and we always say this, that, hey, you're better when you're together. That the mission and the vision here outweighs what, what me and Pastor Brenda can do and, and me and Pastor Brenda and the team and our congregation to do. But when we link arms with one another, when we partner together, I, I love the scripture found in Philippians. It's Philippians 1, 5, and 6. And it says this, family, it says, because of your partnership, this is Paul speaking, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work, anybody believe that God is doing a good work here? Come on, that God is doing a a awesome work with these partners, these organizations that's represented today. And it says, they began a good work in you, will carry it on to completion until the day, until the day. And this is what we're praying today, family, as we're presenting these different organizations that, that the mission and vision for their life and their organization that is still moving forward. Come on, somebody, that, that God is still doing a work. And as we're going to pray today, we're going to have the opportunity to pray, but we're also going to have the opportunity to give. We're going to have the opportunity also to see how we can actually serve. And, and as we already introduced, I want, to, I want to begin to jump into it as what I love about the Kingsley, Shemina, and, and Godfrey, and what I want to presence here about the, um, the Kingsley is that they're wonderful leadership when it comes to outreach um, here at Celebration Church. It's, it's through our partnership with the Carpenter Shelters that we, we've seen increase even over this year. So, Shamin, I want you to just speak a little bit. I know you're pres- uh, representing Jamila Smith, who couldn't be here today. We're praying for you, Jamila. Get well, get well. But Shamina has been an awesome presence for us of seeing the increase of uh, the impact of what Carpenter Shelter and how Celebration Church is continuing to come along. So just, just speak a little bit about the mission in the heart of Carpenter Shelter. Thank you, uh, Pastor Anthony. First and foremost, like, to God be the glory for everything that we do, right? Like, that's our heart um, as a team, my husband and I. Thank you um, so very much for selecting us and trusting us in this position. Um, In regards to Carpenter Shelter, they... God, we love to partner with them, especially Jamila, who couldn't be here today. Just dynamic people with just a wonderful heart. 1982, um, Carpenter Shelter was founded by Blessed Sacrament Church. And how cool is this? Not the situation, but the sense that the pastor came outside one day, saw a homeless man sleeping on the front stoop, and then noticed that another one was sleeping in a car nearby. Mm. And he stopped what he was doing, invited them in, and had them to sleep that night in the church. And then it just continued. Mm -hmm. And that's how they started, with 10 cots and two beds. No, 10 cots and two volunteers, pardon me, is how they started. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying, the cool part of that is for us, it's he didn't, he saw a need and he decided to fill that need. Mm -hmm. He didn't like think so much on it and then I have to go and formulate this grand plan. It was, you're here, you're laying here, come on in. And from there, in about 1988, that's when it officially became um, a shelter in its own right. Mm -hmm. And the thing I love about Carpenters is they address more than just homelessness. It's to 
get their residents to a place of sustainable shelter yeah. through ad advocacy, through education, wow. workshops, job training. So it's very much so we're teaching you how to fish. Come on. We're not just yeah. giving it to you yeah. one time here um, to fulfill this moment. And that's I'm so encouraged by our church that we're yeah. able to see from like beginning and through the process to when they are housed and they have jobs and yeah. you know they're just living um just the life that i think that god would really uh smile upon come on so I, I, I love that and also what i love about it, i also want to shout out cammy thomas uh we do wonderful even here with celebration church are serving dinners a part of Carpenter Shelter to make sure that they're in a position to fulfill the roles. I want to, I want you to talk a little bit, Shamina, about the importance of the local church. It's what I love about these organizations that's present here today. Um, their mission and their vision is being fulfilled because there are local churches who are standing up and saying, yes, come on, somebody. They're, they're embracing the vision and calling and the importance around the local church to continue to say yes. So even talk a little bit about the impact of Celebration Church. Oh my goodness, it's 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 needed. Our impact is very felt. Carpenter Shelter is a private shelter, right? Um, so sometimes, yes, they can partner with the government for help, but government funding is a little fickle, you know. I'm a government employee. Sometimes, you know, every so often, I may or may not get a check. It's called shutdown. We know what that looks like. Um, so can you imagine when you're on such a mission, right? So this is where we as the church, we have such an integral part. So it's, you know, Cami and the team um, coming out and serving dinners, and you're providing food. When you partner with Carpenters, this is actual food that you're helping to provide folks with when we come in and we clean. Pastor, you yeah. were cleaning. Our pastor is a great organizer. Um, actually, if you ever need help with that, um, Pastor Brenda, we can, you know, put him on thumbtack or something <laughs> as a side job. But we go in there, we we clean, um, donating resources mm. because who else is going to do it? Come on. You yeah. know, that's why I said I go back to the pastor. They didn't wait around for anyone to come save them. They took it upon themselves to say, let's do this. Yeah. And they're trusting celebration. They're trusting us, all of us here today, to say, okay, how do we come alongside you? How do we... Um, help you not even just come with on. food or cleaning or resources we can come there and teach classes we can come there and be um an encouragement it's helping to change mindsets of people and letting them know that more is possible come so on. we the church it's us nobody yeah. else is coming so you know we put on the cape and that's the cape of jesus and we and we get it done amen amen i love that i love that amen also be the good project come on amber and and sterling I, i'm super excited and and i want you to share a little bit about you guys story uh, just your heart of of something we me and pastor brenda we've been knowing you guys for a while and just your Man, the, the, the spirit of generosity, the spirit of just gentleness and kind and, and your leadership. But I love when Be The Good Project kind of, to be honest with us, came out of nowhere and it took <laughs> storm. And, and I, we, we've been praying for you guys and just seeing the incredible work. And to be honest, Pastor Brendan knows one of the things I say, when we, when we say yes to the leadership position, we will go find Be The Good Project. And whatever we can do to come alongside, whether that's praying, giving, or serving, because we believe in the vision of what God has been doing through you guys, but just speak a little bit about you guys' story. Oh. Well, we are humbled by that, and we feel your prayers, and we feel your support, and I'll cry talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you did <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, um, Be the Good um, started, you know, during the pandemic, about six months into the pandemic. Um, we were home, as, as most folks were, with, we had have four little kids. And, um, you know, we started reading stories about um, kids that were out of school and no longer being supported with the free and reduced lunches that are that are provided. And we started thinking about, you know, what it would be like to be at home right now and to not have that support and to not be able to put food on your table. And the more we read, you know, there, there was, you know, these factors into play during the pandemic where um, giving was down to local food pantries and food shelters because people were losing jobs, um, but also it was the pandemic. And so people didn't feel safe going out and, and bringing food. And so um, when people needed it most, there was at the same time less people giving. And it just 
pulled on our heartstrings and we started to pray about it. And we were like, God, please help these people find a way to provide it. And he very clearly spoke to us and said, it's you, 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 you have to do something. And so, um, you know, the, the interesting thing was that it wasn't all of this. It wasn't thousands of volunteers and the programs that we have now. It was um, start a a food drive. And it was literally put a box in your front yard Mm -hmm. and, and email some neighbors and just see what they can do. And it was the generosity of our neighbors, really, that, that drove it and multiplied it in ways that we couldn't have foreseen. Um, I forgot the question, I'm, but. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Very polished up here. Um, it did. It started as a food drive. And as we saw the generosity from the community, I mean, just the outpouring, the goal became just to provide a safe and easy way for people to help. And we started to call schools. We started to call folks like the Carpenter Shelter. We started to call nonprofits and just ask, what can we do? How can we help? And Sterling helped at the very beginning, especially just identifying, we need to keep this very easy and focused on food insecurity because there are so many needs in our community. So for Be The Good, it really is just trying to find safe and easy ways to feed our neighbors. And over the last two and a half years, we have, we've seen thousands of people come together and do so in their own homes, in their own neighborhoods, school groups, church groups, who have just, whether it's one-time volunteers, weekly volunteers, monthly volunteers, collectively have been able to feed thousands of people. Mm. And the miracle of it is it started with this box. And we have time and time been encouraged by the five loaves and the two fish because we have we're an entirely volunteer run organization and we have a garage and we have little boxes of food but through these conduits god uses them in ways that continue to astound us and humble us every day Come on, wow. I want you to speak. I, I love that miracle. And I, that's what, as soon as you started talking about it, because that's what we've been saying with Be The Good Project. And I think that's very important even for our church of understanding that that your yes matters, yeah. that, that, that your yes can actually make a difference. But speak a little bit about even the partnership with churches. How, how can we actually come alongside of you guys and talk a little bit like, to be honest, like what each organization does have, have challenges, does have, you know, hey, how can we actually begin to continue to move forward? I want you to speak a little bit. How can we actually come alongside of you guys? Yeah. So your prayers are felt. I, I want to just, it, we feel them. We know you have covered us in prayer. It is not without, this journey is not without some um, impediments in the road. Uh, you know, anything that God is doing, the enemy tries to come in and, you know, throw some sand in the wheels. And so we, it, we feel that resistance and we also feel those prayers. Mm-hmm. And so the local church in that way, I mean, just the covering of prayer in this ministry, in this outreach has been incredible. And we know God has opened doors. We know God hears those prayers, has broken down barriers, man-made or otherwise. Um, And then the tangible needs. I mean, you're completely right. It really is as simple as whether it's a bag of food, filling a little box with food. It means so much to these families to have an emergency resource. Mm. Because sometimes these are not necessarily families who need constant food support, but there is an emergency need. Mm. There might be some sort of unforeseen circumstance. Mm. Right now, groceries are at an all-time high. Gas prices have been at an all-time high. So families that had not necessarily even understood all of the different resources to them would see a box at their school and be able to, with dignity, go and get food from it. And you filling those boxes, making sandwiches, making a bag of food for a family that, you know, discreetly can receive that and feel that love through that tangible resource. It matters. I mean, we have had principles break down in tears truly at just the, the generosity of this community, whether it's refugees coming into their schools, whether it's families that have fallen on hard times, that need being met and a principal being able yeah. to hand a bag of food mm-hmm. or direct them to a little pantry, it matters. Come on. And so it, it never, never think that, you know, a couple of cans, it, it truly is. It can be life changing as we do it together. It's so good. Yeah. So good. And what I love about it, come on, if you serve at one of our serve Sundays this year, can we just make some noise? 
I love that uh, so far we had two service Sundays and we partnered with you guys with Be The Good Project. And we, come on, we, we, we fill, we stocked over Little Food Pantries all over the DMV. Come on, in here. Locally in Maryland, come on, we, and you know my heart for Maryland as well. So just to see our church continuing to, to lean into that and continuing to say yes, it's, it's been awesome. We have, we have another one coming up in November too, so we're, we have some information for you guys. But um, Jordan Gear, come on, with One Child Matters is here. Come on, Jordan. I, I love, come on, can we just get our hands for Jordan who, who flew up from Jacksonville, Florida, and I want to presence Pastor John. Uh, John. Pastor John is here as well. I want to presence him, but come on, Jordan, just speak a little bit about the, our special partnership that we have with One Child Matters, being part of the global family here in Celebration. And what I love to say to this family, we, we will always make an impact right here in our backyard. Come on. We will always serve right here in our backyard and making sure, but also God has given us a unique vision and a u- unique mission. And I love it. It, it. it goes back to the Great Commission that we are not just reaching right here but God has graced us to reach even beyond and beyond the seas. And I love the impact that we have. I don't want to give it away, Jordan. I want you to go ahead and and share a little bit about it. Come on. I'm going to hijack for one second. I promise I'll answer the question. (laughs) But uh, I do come from Jacksonville. I'm our missions pastor down there. Uh, I get to serve you guys here as well. And uh, I bring greetings from our senior pastor in Jacksonville, Pastor Tim. And there's one thing, if there's one thing he wanted to get across to you guys, he just wanted you guys to know that what you do matters. That it may be normal for you, you live here, but it matters that you get together every week in our nation, right down the street from our nation's capital and lift up the name of Jesus and you serve your community and you do it so well. So give yourself a hand, man, you make us so proud. And I just want to say, man, many of you may have no idea what your giving does, but that it touches the four corners of the earth. And I, part of our vision of Celebration Church is exactly what Pastor Anthony said, is that we are called to reach the nations. And so we have 14 strategic partners around the world. And just this year, you're giving, not, not just Jacksonville, but you're giving, help plant over 15 churches from the jungles of Ecuador to the villages of Thailand and all across the uh, the continent of Africa. We help feed 83,000 kids every single day in Zimbabwe because of you guys and our amazing partners on the ground there doing amazing work. And so today we're highlighting one of our partners that we've been able to work with for 10 years now, just taking things to a whole nother level for what God has called us to do in the nation of Zimbabwe. And so that organization is One Child. And basically what One Child does is they partner with our local church in Zimbabwe, uh, who's already in uh, 22 communities across Zimbabwe. Uh, 22 locations where right there you pull up. I got to go to 10 of them just this year. You pull up, you see the celebration sign, you see the greeters wearing the celebration t-shirts welcoming you. I mean, it's literally just an extension of our family, but they partner with the local schools and they start an amazing program where here in Jackson, here in the United States, we can sponsor a child and help provide key resources to them. And we do that all through our church there in Zimbabwe. So one child, man, they are family. They're just an extension of us. And they do this all around the world. And they partnered with us to see the change in Zimbabwe. Come on, come on. I I love it. Family, can we just put a hand? together for that. And, and, and what I love about what you're saying, Jordan, even with this unique partnership, I, and when we was on our call, I love how you said see kids. Yeah. So as you guys know, we have see kids here and you get to drop your little ones off and maybe you're dropping them off pretty, pr- pr- pretty quick to get rid of them. But I know I do drop them off quick, but, but I love that even in Zimbabwe, there are see kids as well. And they're their family. I want you to speak a little bit about the uniqueness of our family being a sea kid. So who you're sponsoring, you're sponsoring a family. You're sponsoring somebody who's already calling celebration home. Yeah, if I if I could, you know, this may be strong words, but this is what what opened my eyes to why this is so important. Is if you found out a sea kid was hungry in the room right down the hall, you would do something about it. And we have thousands of hungry sea kids that go to church every Sunday. Uh, 
and they don't know where, know where their next meal is going to come from. Zimbabwe is 95% unemployed. The, the economy is destroyed. The, the, there's no farms. They've all been moved out of the country. There's not a lot of hope in Zimbabwe. But through this program, we not only provide food, but we provide health care, schooling, and uh, really it gets us a youth pastor into the school to begin to minister to these kids and give them Jesus. And, you know, I just want to share a story, if that's okay, of uh, my sponsor child. I got to meet her the first time uh, this August I was there, and her name's Sitsi, and her family are refugees from Mozambique. And so her family were in the middle of civil war, basically genocide was happening. And they, they just fleed to the, the place that they could get into, Zimbabwe. And they were just met with more heartache, more uh, loss. There, there's no jobs. There's nowhere for her father to work. He was, a, uh, he was skilled with leather and it, there, he can't even get his hands on leather. And uh, they did not know where their next meal was going to come from. And by the grace grace of God, she was accepted into the program. And now he has a job because he didn't have to worry about every single day. How am I going to put food on the table? And their family has been completely transformed. And so uh, it's just amazing how right here in the U.S., we can just through one small act, we can change somebody's life. Amen. Come on. Amen. So even for our, our next, yeah, we, it's okay. We can, we, we can clap. We can clap. I know. Hey, if you go for it, you got to keep, you got to keep going you got to keep going but what I love about I'm big on on the how Jordan uh, and I love what you guys are saying I, I love the presence uh, but also what God spoke to me this year I'll share this he said Anthony embrace the yes Anthony when, when, I, when I'm speaking to you I need you to embrace it but also now embrace the how I believe that God is speaking to everyone in here right now and I believe God is speaking even to our online family as well but I want you guys to even, as we get ready to end, talk about the how. How can we actually partner with you guys and link arms with you guys and continue to, to see the partnership go forward? That's a great question. So with one child, the answer is to sponsor a child. For $39 a month, you can provide all of these services to one kid's life. And so the way that you'll do that is we have profiles out in the lobby. You can go and see some of the kids, but all of these children are from Zimbabwe, part of our church family. And so you can give $39 a month to provide all those services. I think we actually, yeah, it's right up there. So you'll see what that money goes to. Uh, one child is a very... Uh, upright, really open organization, only $7 of what you give goes to administration. Everything else goes straight to the field to help that child. And so uh, $39 does that, or you can uh, opt to give a little bit more at $45 a month. And that helps to feed uh, unsponsored kids because, you know, what, what we do is we're not going to go into school and say, okay, you get food, but you don't, and you get food. Uh, so one child uh, steps in and they pay for the food of all of the kids that go to that school. So if you want to help with that fund, you can give $45 a Come month. On. Amen. 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 Also for you, be the good. I, I want you guys to speak a little bit about the how. I, I love on our call that we had this weekend and you talked already a little bit here about the challenges and, and continuing to see a volunteer step up, even in a little God is, is doing the miraculous. But even as our church, I want us to lean in, embrace the yes and speak a little bit how we can continue to partner with you guys. Yeah, so the, the three main programs we have are making sandwiches, stocking food pantries, and making care packages. And each one, you know, is designed that you can do it in your own home with your families and on your own time. Um, the sandwiches get delivered to the homeless around the city. Uh, for many of them, it's the only meal they'll get is a couple of sandwiches each day. Um, the, the food pantries, there's 24. Five locations around uh, Virginia, D.C. and Maryland, and you can sign up for a weekend to pick one pantry and just stock it with non-perishable food. And you'll see that it that often when you arrive that that it is already emptied, and so it is. There's a great need for that. And then we're currently in the season of doing um, um, Christmas and Thanksgiving care packages, 
Yeah. Last year, we delivered over 1,100 care packages to wow. partners um, through schools and community centers, and we're hoping to do that again this year. So you can sign up to make one care package. You can sign up to make 20 care packages. Every bag makes a difference, as Amber talked about. And, you know, if I could just for a second, you know, one thing that we talked about was just responding to God when we prayed, right? Just hearing him say, take that first step, put the box out on your street, put out a call for help and see what happens, being obedient. I had a friend the other day describe it as, you know, it's not charity. It's responding to the grace and glory of God. And that's really what we think about as we have continued this, this mission is, you know, we pray and we give thanks and we worship and we give praise and serving and giving our time, talent, treasure is another way of just responding to the greatness of God. And so I would just encourage everyone to pray about all of these wonderful opportunities, hear what God has to say and put on your heart and then take that first step. Come on. Amen. 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 If I can give one shout out to the young people. We have seen so many young people volunteer. Mm. And if you don't have the resources to fill up a pantry, mm. we are happy to help provide those for you. What we need, unfortunately, Sterling and I can't hit all 25 every weekend. Um, it would be lovely, but um, we need boots on the ground, folks that are checking the boxes who are going and making sure there's nothing, you know, aside from unexpired non-perishable food in those boxes for the families every mm -hmm. week. So if you don't feel like you have the means to be able to provide the actual food, we will provide that for you if you're willing to go and just be sort of the, the hands and feet at the those boxes. Um, we want to make it as easy and as simple as possible for everyone who's involved. Amen. Amen. I want to end with the cop and the shelter, uh, Shamina. We all know that the holiday season is right around the corner uh, and the weather's changing. It's getting a little bit cold out. So I want to even speak about uh, even with dealing with the cop and the shelter celebration church, how can we continue and talk a little bit even about the outreaches and coat drives that we have coming up for the remainder of the year? Yes, Pastor, thank you um, for that. So actually, I forgot to mention before, all of the partnership that has happened has led to a 90% success rate within mm -hmm. Carpenter Shelter. Mm -hmm. I'm a numbers person, right? <laughs> um, love for it to be 100%. We'll continue to pray um, and do the things and do the work for it to get mm -hmm. to 100% in Jesus' name. But 90% right now is really, really good number. That's their success rate when they're transitioning their guests mm. from um, the shelter onto wow. sustainable sort of independence. Um, various things, right? Just as Be The Good is saying right now, how can you help? Well, after church, you know, fine. Um, myself, my husband, this is what outreach is. It's not two people. It's the entire church, right? And so we have coat drives coming up with Carpenter Shelter um, buying a coat, right? For, um, they have children there as well. Let me say that. So it's families that you're helping. So you have little ones, teenagers, um, people that are in school. That's something I've didn't even realize that you can be working mm. and classified as homeless. Mm. I did not realize that until some years ago. That's my own, you know, I ever say in that sense, but you have people that they are working and they're trying and they're at Carpenters right now. Um, these are things that we can do to help. The coat drive coming up, um, Christmas is coming up, being able to have um, Thanksgiving meals and packages. Um, for us in our heart here, Pastor, and you've allowed, you and Pastor Brenda have allowed my husband and I to sort of express this. We want to be a team and we want our church to be a church that yes someone's going to get fed on thanksgiving and that what happens on november 30th and then christmas is going to come around and we're going to feel super charitable and we're going to pack some things up and we're going to go shopping and we're going to feel hashtag great and then what happens on january 3rd yeah and the 5th in february right so absolutely there's some things you pray about they're all in all things you pray for sure, and you're led. And then there is also Come on. life. Yeah. And we're going to do this. Come on. And so if you hear a call from us, um, please 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just 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 take a breath, take a beat and say, I, I can do this. I can go get a coat. Yeah. Like shopping is my love language. Let me tell y'all, my husband can verify. <laughs> but so it like when it comes to coats, that is like my time to like show out and show up. I love it because now I'm just I'll, I'll pick something. I'll find a coupon. It becomes a whole <laughs> game to me when I can go shopping um, for Jesus. Right. Is how I put it. <laughs> Uh, you can, honey, he's not smiling. I don't. I want you to smile at that because I'm getting in trouble. But yes, I, I shop for Jesus. That is my my gift. And so th that that's really all that it is, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you hear that call and we're putting on, we're putting out those calls on how to help. You're hearing it now, so I'll come and coordinate with you now in a little mm -hmm. bit, right? That's a no brainer to me. Twenty five pantries you need to hit. We have more than twenty five people here yeah. today. We can do that and online as well. So done, right? We'll work together. We'll figure that out. Mm -hmm. yes, Come on. And I, 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 let's put our hands together for that family. I, I, I want to end with this family. I want to, because I love what, what Pastor Jordan said already. And I, I, from the bottom of my heart, I'm, I'm being a little bit transparent here because I, I've been in your seats. I've been on the, the online. And one of the things that's on me and my heart and Pastor Brenda's heart is to continue to be transparent and letting the people know that your, your generosity, that your giving is making a difference. From the bottom of our heart, we want to continue to, to lean into that. And as what God spoke to me and back in January, here's what I believe what God is speaking to you right now. Embrace the yes, that God is speaking to each and every one of you. There's going to be a, a QR code um, that's going to come on the screen. And for our, our online family, there's going to be a link right there. And what that, what that link is going to take you to is, is to all of the, the sign-up options that these wonderful partnerships talked about today. So we, we, we have these three buckets that, that you can lean into today. Come on, you can, you can pray. We all can pray, right? Pray, what, what, what is God speaking to you today? But also through that give, how, how can me and my family make a difference for someone? <laughs> and the other one is serve. I, I love this fountain, Matthew 5, 14. I wanna end with this scripture. It says this family in Matthew 5, 14, it says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. What a wonderful opportunity today, Celebration family, to actually be the light for somebody else that may be in a dark place. That, that we can, that God has given us the light so that we can go turn the light on for somebody else. For this week, here's what we're praying. Hey, God, show me who I can turn the light on for. Maybe they can't find the light switch, but you are the light switch. And we want to be an opportunity. Maybe that's through the cop in the shelter. Hey, hey, maybe that's through be the good. Maybe this is reaching beyond the season and linking up with one child matters. Hey, we can turn the light on. And hear me when I say this, family, your generosity has already been making a difference. But we're just getting started. That we're, we're, we're just getting started. So let's continue to, to lean in and hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. And let's make a difference. Let's make a difference. Amen? Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet. And I want to pray. I want to end this segment with, with praying over our, our partners. And if you can just stretch your hands. I'm, I'm going to invite Pastor Brenda up. She's going to help us pray it out. Amen. Amen. Just, so just go ahead and just begin to stretch your hands towards them and and as we're praying family we're just believing as we we, we said in the scripture earlier we said in the scripture earlier that that through the partnership of the gospel here's what Paul was saying that that he who began a good work he will because he will see it into the completion of the day so here's what we're leaning into, and we are praying, church, as we're stretching our hands forward. Come on, our online family, let's begin to stretch your hands forward that the work that they are already doing is phenomenal. That the work that they are already doing has changed lives. That, that the work that they're doing is, is making a difference. And, and even though that the enemy would, would love to stop what they're doing, we thank God that the work has, is not coming to an end. We thank God that the vision and the mission 
is still moving forward. So as we just begin to stretch, Pastor Brent, if you can come forward, if you can just, just begin to rest your hand on, on all all this go through. So Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for what you're doing at the Carpenter Shelters, God. We, we thank you that you are, you're touching families that's being transitioned from, from homelessness and you're, you're making a path. Your word says, God, that you will make the crooked straight. And we thank you that this is an organization that, that's, that's creating a safe place, that this is an organization where kids can continue to be a kid and, and have safety. This is a safe place of keeping families families together where moms and dads and, and siblings are together and we're praying that that success rate will move up from 90% that we're praying for 99 we're praying for 100% Lord God we're thanking you for all of the volunteers that's coming in right now Lord God to prepare a meal Lord God we're, we're thanking you for all of the volunteers that's coming in to supply a coat so a little one won't be cold this, this winter we're thanking you for what you're doing you're just getting started God so touch the the volunteers, touch the staff, increase their morale, increase, speak to them, knowing that the work that they're doing is making a difference. So we, we pray for that. We pray for be the good project, Lord God, a vision that started in a home, but it's touching thousands of homes even right now, Lord God. I thank you for the mission and the vision of you spoke to the merchants. Maybe it was years ago, Lord God, but I thank you that for every obstacle that tries to come your way, your word says, God, that what, what God put together, man, Man cannot separate. So we thank you for the vision of touching the families. And we're praying for every obstacle, even right now, for the challenges. Maybe the challenges for volunteers. We're praying that angels are being sent right now to, to touch volunteers, whether they're here in celebration or whether they're looking online. We're praying for an increase. Let this be a season of favor, Lord God. Let this be a season of the overflow. We're praying for a flood. Flood there flood their, their, their app right now, flood it right now, that even break down because people are signing up, people are coming out of the woods, people are wanting to be a part, people, we're praying for the people to link arms, to come alongside so that they don't have to carry this by themselves, Lord God, but they're linking up, we're praying for partnerships, we're praying for grants, come on, we're, we're, we're praying for the resource, we're, we're, we're praying that whatever the unknown may be, that the known is becoming, the unknown is becoming known right now, we're praying for the right networking that can ease the burden, because your word says, God, that if we link up with you, that your burden is light, and it's not a burden, this is you, Lord God, so you do the mission, you do the calling, and the grace that's on them, the anointing that's on them, we pray that it flows and touch the families that it's supposed to touch. And we pray for one child matters, Lord God. We pray for our celebration global family, Lord God. We thank you that even in that word partnership, Lord God, that the, the, the work that they're doing, the, the thousands of kids that they're touching and the, the resources from the water and everything in the schools and everything, Lord God. And we're praying even right now for all of the sea kids in Zimbabwe, Lord God that the food resources are increasing, Lord God, that the partnerships are increasing, Lord God, that the water supply is increasing, Lord God, for whatever struggle may be, Lord God. We're praying that you will flood it with everything that you have, Lord God. We're praying for breakthrough even right now. So, Lord God, for every child who needs a sponsorship, Lord God, you speak to, 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 to the one that's supposed to sponsor even right now, to the one that's supposed to say yes, Lord God. Let, let their mind be saying, I'm saying yes to that. I'm, I'm going to make a difference, Lord God. So I pray right even right now for Pastor Jordan, Lord God, as he's walking in this calling of connecting organizations and connecting churches. And we're just praying that he continues to be a conduit, Lord God, to touch the right people, Lord God. Put him in the right places, Lord God. Put him in the right rooms, Lord God. Put him at the right seat, Lord God, so that child can be fed, so that child can grow up and be a king. And that child, that woman, can, that girl can grow up to be a queen and walk into the very thing that she is called to do. So I pray for his favor so that that young girl can walk in her call and I pray for favor on his life, Lord God, so that doors will be open. I pray for favor on his life, Lord God, so that that, that, young, that young boy can have a meal and walk in a calling that God has called him to. We pray this and we seal this over our partners and we glorify your name in Jesus. Come on, family, can we begin to put our hands together? Come on.
Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Can we begin to put our hands together? As we continue in our time of worship, bringing God's tithes and our offerings. My name is Big John, Pastor John. I'm, I'm working on trying to get medium John, but uh, it's really, it doesn't help walking 22 miles through DC yesterday and eating hot dogs on the way. But we love being here today. I've been part of Celebration since 2004 as a missionary, as a pastor, as a youth pastor, doing school, church, 12 years of setting up on a Sunday. Put your hands together for the setup team. Don't they do good? You could feel the spirit when you come up here. I saw 200 cars out there, and I said, we're five always hit Celebration DC today at 9 o'clock. And they're like, oh, they're playing basketball. We're like, all right, okay, we're going to show love to them too. I love how the sign says, keep going, Celebration. Keep going, turn right. That should be our mantra. I love uh, all that was shared today. And um, as, as a missions pastor and a missionary for Celebration and working with one child, and I feel like I was every one of those, I was sitting in every one of those chairs as somebody being blessed. As a child, when I was young, my family was on um, welfare. Um, we went to the Vietnam um, Monument yesterday and somebody said, have you lost someone? I said, I lost my stepdad. He came back from Vietnam, but he had PTSD and it made our childhood so difficult. So I was the one getting government cheese. You know, I was the one that needed shelter. And um, so I just thank God for, for you as a church, for, for how you have just continued to presence Jesus. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 25, the King will say to those on his right hand, come you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And what does Jesus say? For I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you put a roof over my head, you took me in. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king said to them, assuredly I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. So Partnership Sunday, it's not just us showing up. It's not just us volunteering. It's not just us giving. We're doing it to Jesus. We're bringing Jesus to people in those situations. They wonder, because I've sat in so many of those seats, where is my help going to come from? When is Jesus going to show up? And when you put that box out and you fill it with food and when you volunteer at a shelter and when you help a child, Jesus shows up. And as you give at Celebration Church every Sunday, it is our prayer that heaven comes down. So let's pray for that offering right now. You can give uh, via the app. You can give via texting. You can give via the website. You can give the good old fashioned way. All right. So let's pray for that as offerings today that God would bring Jesus to situations and to people desperate. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the privilege to partner with you, Lord, to partner with what you're doing to bring you to the most hurting and broken situations. Bless every tithe, every offering today, everything done today, Lord. Bless it, and we pray nothing less than heaven to come down to earth. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. All right, the ushers are gonna uh, pass those buckets. Yes, thank you. Happy Sunday, everyone. If I didn't say it before, happy Sunday. Um, so if you didn't, I, I don't know, uh, Big John, can I call you Big John? <laughs> Pastor John, um, about me, so I always joke around, if you know about me now, you know, I'm from Brooklyn, and this is like pre-gentrification Brooklyn before like Whole Foods and artisanal sandwich shops were in Brooklyn. I was, I was in Brooklyn, and so it's like, I always, people are like, oh, you grew up in a hood, and I'm like, I guess, I don't know, it didn't seem like it for me, and then so, fast forward years later, everyone always saw that meme that says, like, the worst hood is adulthood, have you ever seen that? That's like the toughest hood, right? It was not the worst, but it's like the toughest hood is adulthood, and that's coming from free Whole Foods, Brooklyn, Shamina, telling you that. And so in my adulthood, segue, right, sisterhood, that is my, yes, 
Yes, so that's not a girlhood at all. No, no. <laughs> I'm put a girlhood to the side. I have sisterhood when parenthood is also like on the side. But sisterhood is coming up, ladies. That is um, just our time to get together and fellowship. Our pastor, Pastor Brenda, is dynamic in putting that together. Um, if you've never been, yes. Hand claps for um, our pastor Brenda. Um, this um, this time around is going to be the tale of two gardens. It's going to be November fifth at the Park Meridian at three o'clock. It is not something you want to miss. I think the last time we had sisterhood, I was traveling for work, and they fa- like I, I FaceTime, and so I'm there just with the camera, and I'm like, let me see what's going on. It looks so pretty, but the word is dynamic, and we're gonna have more information about that coming up. Like I said, November fifth. Mark your calendars. 3 p.m. is going to be our awesome time in fellowship um, with sisterhood, the best hood you could be a part of. You said that so well, I almost want to show up. Can I just come back? Uh, We need ushers. Okay, I hear you. My whole life is sisterhood. I got two daughters. One came with me today and my wife. So men, get your women there, okay? Um, It will help you. Listen, um, we're, we're so privileged to have these great partnerships mentioned today. One of the ways you can help today is by looking at one of these child profiles in the lobby. Uh, Pastor Jordan, his wife, Alyssa, and my daughter, Annika, are setting those up as we speak. And the, these profiles, I'll share with one with you right now. Uh, this child's name is Brilliant. Uh, and so we have one children's uh, C Kids pastor for every 50 kids in the program there in Zimbabwe. So today our goal is to get over 20 kids sponsored here to de- together today. Today amongst our families here that 20 families would make the decision to step forward a relationship is always a risk but I tell you this relationship is worth the risk um, and this kid's name is brilliant um, he's six years old his birthday is December 4th he says here that uh, and when you open these profiles you can see what's going on in their life uh, he's active he's cheerful uh, his favorite thing is his wire car Uh, He's learning to help with washing dishes. His favorite food is rice and beef. He's thankful for life. When he grows up, he wants to be a truck driver because he likes to drive. You know, he's six. He's already driving something. All right. About my family, this is the part at the bottom, and this is how 95% of unemployment can hit a country. About my family, his primary caregiver is his aunt. He lives with his aunt. His primary caregiver reason is his parents abandoned him. They may have had to leave for work purposes or or substance abuse. Who knows what it is? He says he has no sibling living with him in his home. But his number one thing I said before is he's thankful for is his life. And in Zimbabwe, they name name their children often with with a hope or a prayer. So whoever named this child said, as bad as our situation is, this child is brilliant. This child's gonna be brilliant. Let me tell you, in the school program he's already enrolled in, that a sponsorship will help him go even further in, he is brilliant and he is blessed today in Jesus' name. So I encourage you, somebody sponsor this kid today. If somebody wants to, you gotta come grab it from me. But there are 29 others out there as well to give a bit of variety, boys and girls. There's also ones on the website through the link tree. So we are believing for great things. And it's a, it's a 501c3 tax deductible that will go out to Colorado Springs to the organization there once a month. You can choose the day that it goes out. And believe me, in a few weeks, you get a letter from your kid. You start to write and uh, correspond back and forth. Great things happen when we choose relationship and to bring Jesus to hard places. So we encourage you to come and uh, check out our, our table out there. Talk to our other partners. Bless them. See how you can get involved. But let's stand together right now. Let's let's go ahead. We're going to give you the priestly blessing as we go. Celebration DC. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus name. Amen. Bless you celebration. We love you.